morning, afternoon, or evening. Welcome to I'm Talking Waffles. I'm your host, Ileana. So today I'm very excited because we are doing a book review. Woo! So I mentioned it the other day. Um, I don't know if it was last episode or the episode before that, but I want to review They Both Die in the End by Adam Silvera. This is a book that I read probably like on around December or so. And so it's been a couple of months since I read that book, but it broke my heart. And so just a warning, there will be spoilers in this book review, um, but I will let you know when the spoilers are coming. So that way you can listen up to the part where there will be spoilers. So just want to give that disclaimer before we jump into it. So I'm very excited and I hope you are too. So let's get talking about this book. Published in 2017, They Both Die in the End is a young adult science fiction novel. It's basically set in kind of like a dystopian version of New York City. And it follows these two characters, uh, the one character named Mateo Torres and Rufus Emeterio. I don't say the names right. It's hard, you know, if you read, you know, like the names get mispronounced all the time. <laughs> so basically in the story, these two characters get notified by this thing called death cast, which is like these people call them up and they tell them, hey, you have 24 hours left to live like the most of your last day. And so it's able to tell like when people die, but it won't tell them how they die. So people call like this final day alive their end day. And the people who are experiencing their end day are called deckers. So Deckers are basically like Mateo, one of the main characters, is actually reading blogs written by Deckers. So these Decker people, which are like the people who have 24 hours left to live, basically write about like their experience and they have all of these like events and stuff out there for people to celebrate their last days, like bars and parties and access to events and basically all of that stuff. And so the story itself follows a lot about this main character, Mateo, and how he and Rufus like build this like relationship, friendship then. And the way that they meet, so there's basically this app and it's called Last Friend and it matches Deckers to people. That way they can like, spend their days together. And this doesn't necessarily mean that it has to be two Deckers who spend the time together. It could be like other random people who want to just like give that person like the company that they really need in this like final 24 hours. Um, so basically that's how Mateo and Rufus end up meeting. And so another thing that I really liked about this story is it really touches on like the theme of mortality and how you really you can't escape death and like it's always going to be something you're going to have to face as well as the important of like importance of friendship and it even is a lgbt book which is pretty cool because you don't really see a lot i mean there's definitely a lot more of them now but they weren't as common before and it's not like in your face either it's like a legit good one so yeah. So let's talk about the plot summary. So that was basically like an overview of like the story, but I want to talk about how the story happens because it's really, really well done. <laughs> so one thing that I want to touch on before this is the writing style. Now, this is really great because it has the different perspectives of different characters. It's all done from their point of view. So that's always, that's always my favorite kind of point of view, like from that person's point of view, but sometimes it can get confusing when you have multiple characters, but not in this book. The book does like it says who it is that you're checking the point of view of, but it honestly doesn't need that because the writing style is so good and they capture the tones and personalities of the characters so well that when you're reading the page, you know exactly whose point of view it is. And I think that's honestly like incredible. And that's something that I really, really liked about this book. It's so well written and the characters are like fleshed out and you can really tell, like I already said this, but you can really tell which character is thinking, which character is speaking and like all of that. So after me nerding out about the amazingness of Capture and a Voice, we're gonna talk about the plot summary. So basically the book starts off with Mateo, who I kind of would say is like the main, main character. Like Rufus is a main character, but Mateo, I think, is the main, main character. And he basically is reading blogs about Deckers and how the death cast has never been wrong. And so he's just kind of reading people's experiences with it. And then he gets a call from the death cast people and he's like, oh, like this isn't good. And he's obviously not 
happy about that, especially because there's like this important thing to note that his dad is in a coma and his mom has passed away like a long time ago or she left them or I can't quite remember, but it was something like that. So he, it's really just him. And he is the definition of like introvert, shy character. Um, and he's very sweet. And so he's obviously really upset about that. Um, and he doesn't want to go outside. He wants to basically hide in his room and hope for the best that the death cast is wrong. Um, but after a little while, he's like, he decides to like push himself because you really don't want to spend your last day just like stuck in your house forever. So basically he decides to join Last Friend, which I mentioned was the app before, um, looking for like someone to really hang out with. And there's like some really funny stuff about just like the weird people on the app. There's some like really creepy people. Um, and they're like, oh, like send me pictures of your toes. Or, like just like really creepy guys. Um, some weird people who feel very entitled and like there are times where he's like, you know what? Like, I really don't want to do this, but he does end up meeting Rufus from there. And so the point of view that introduces Rufus is actually because he is beaten up this guy named Patrick, who everybody calls Peck. And he's basically like the current boyfriend of Rufus's ex-girlfriend. And so he's like beating up this guy. And then he gets the call saying like, he's got 24 hours left to live. Um, and he's like, this isn't good. But because he was like beaten up this guy, the police start coming after him and his friends. And so he has to like escape. And there was like this whole thing about like Patrick calling the cops on him um, and like trying to set him up to get arrested even though like it's his last day, like all this stuff. So this is why he actually joins the Last Friend app because he can't spend time with his friends because they end up getting arrested. And so he's like, okay, I'm gonna join Last Friends. And then he ends up meeting Mateo. And they end up making like plans to meet up and stuff. And then he goes to pick him up at his apartment because Mateo does not wanna leave his apartment at all because he's obviously like super shook. So, and then they finally get to meet together. And what Mateo wants to do is he wants to visit the people that mean the most for him because he knows he's not gonna like survive. He's hopeful that he's gonna live, but he knows like death cast has never been wrong. So basically he and Rufus go to the hospital to visit his dad, who I mentioned is in the coma. And then he goes to see his best friend. Um, and there is, it's a really, basically his best friend is like his only friend really. And she has a young daughter and he's like the godfather of the daughter and stuff. And so he doesn't want to tell her that he is going to die. So he just tries to visit her, but eventually she figures it out and he like runs away and like doesn't accept her calls. But eventually they kind of like meet up and decide like, you know what? Like we want, you should spend time with like the people who matter the most to you um, because you don't have much time left. And so this best friend of his and Rufus and Mateo end up hanging out and they go to this thing called Make a Moment which is basically, it's kind of like Make-A-Wish Foundation. And basically people who are Deckers are able to go to this and experience things that they never really got to experience in real life. So for instance, like traveling or skydiving, all of that is done in like this virtual reality kind of world. And so they go skydiving and they were not impressed by it, but that's okay. It was just a nice moment with all the friends together. So yeah, they're hanging out a lot. And then like Mateo and Rufus, they spend a lot more time together. And because of the personality that he has, Rufus is kind of like a street guy. Like obviously the book starts off with him beating someone up. Um, He's really sweet, but he's like a street guy. But the best part about it is because of the personality type he is, he's really pushing Mateo to become bolder and take risks and really do the things that he really, really wants to do. Um, Yeah, and they obviously they talk about like dying and their opinions on it. And they're like form like a really good friendship at this point, basically. So another place that Mateo basically wanted to visit is this thing called the World Travel Arena. And that's basically when Mateo learns that Rufus's parents and sister died and Rufus is like in foster care. And like, he's kind of like, like that's how he met his friends. Like they're in like this foster care area and there was like this, um not how I say scene, there's this scene where they had like his birthday party and like all of that stuff. Um, And so again, they contemplate death, they talk about it, they talk about like how people they know, how they've died and they wonder what like what their last thoughts were and stuff. And then they ride the bike together to like a park and then they meet up with the best friend and they get to basically select a virtual reality like experience um, where it's like travel the world in like 80 minutes or something along the lines of that. And so basically they travel to a bunch of these places. And then they go to this club, like bar club thing that's basically made for Deckers because 
it doesn't matter how old you are, like, because you're going to die that day anyway. So the rules don't really apply to you. And so they go there and they post pictures. They're having a great time. But then this, this is where the, where, where more drama starts. So Rufus is really into Instagram and like photography and all of this stuff. And so he takes a picture of him at this like club with like Mateo and Mateo's friend and like all that. And that's when Peck, which is the guy he was beating up, sees the picture and is like, you know what? I'm going to go there. And he gets a gun. He takes a gun with him. And we know these two characters are going to die. So for me, I remember I was like on the edge of my seat. I'm like, oh my goodness. Like, is this how they're going to die? Do they die? Like, what's going to happen? So then they're, they're at that party. Well, not like party, but they're at that bar then. And they're doing karaoke and they're having like a lot of fun. And then Mateo, this is a spoiler. This is a spoiler. So um, plug your ears, maybe skip a minute over. But this is when Mateo works up the courage to kiss Rufus. And it's like, oh my goodness, yes, they finally admit like their feelings for each other. And it's really cute. Um, but it's kind of run very short because like that guy I mentioned with the gun, he comes and he's like, pew, 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 like trying to shoot people, but the characters managed to escape. So they're okay. <laughs> so, and then after that, they're like, do, do, do. They're like, you know what? We just want to hang out together because they know they have feelings for each other. And they both finally admitted their feelings together. So they go back to like, Mateo's like apartment then to just kind of hang out and then they just go to bed like they make a whole point about like how Mateo only just wants to cuddle with this guy and <laughs> it's so wholesome and so they're just like cuddling and sleeping and stuff however this is the spoiler I would recommend you skip probably about two minutes ahead if you don't want to know how the story ends but basically Mateo wakes up from this nap and he goes to make Rufus tea However, when he ignites the gas burner on the stove, the apartment like bursts into flames and Mateo is killed. And this is foreshadowed at the beginning because he talks about how there was an issue with the stove and so someone was gonna come repair it, but he told them not to repair it because it was his last day alive. And so that was hinted at the beginning of the book. And so that's how he dies. He boom, blows up. And so obviously Rufus wakes up and there's like a bunch of smoke and he's like, what? No, like what happened? And then he sees that Mateo died and it's really sad. And so after like all of that, he puts on his headphones so he can listen to a recording of Mateo's voice and he crosses the street. He's not looking for cars and that's how the book ends. So we can assume that he definitely got hit by a car um, at the end of the book. And so they do die. They, they literally die at the end, but it is such a good story. Like, so that's like the story overview. That's like basically everything that happens in the story. There are other parts of the book too, where there's like this lady with very colorful hair and how like it follows her and oh, what was she doing? She was like a news reporter or something. And she was really trying to get like the big story and stuff. And so it follows her. Um, she's like a side character though. So not as important as like the two main characters. But if the book sounds interesting, I definitely recommend that you check it out. I love this book. It hurt my soul. It took a really long time to really accept the ending. Like it's a good ending. And like the title of the book tells you they both die in the end, but I wasn't sure. I was like, are they really like die in the end? But that's the point. The author, I read about this after and the author basically said that the title isn't meant to spoil anything because the book isn't about that they die. It's about how they spent their last day together, how they focused on the friendships they built, how like you can't avoid death no matter what you do. Um, it's going to happen. And so I really like the themes that it touches on. And I think it's so, so well done. I love the book. I would probably give it a five out of five. Like I loved it. There was nothing wrong with it. The pacing was great. The characters were great. It all made sense. The world was well done as well. And how it like adjusted to these Decker people. There's always that, like that underlying question about like, how do they know when these people are going to die? I think it was good they didn't answer that because I think any actual answer to that would probably make the book less good, if that makes sense. Like some things are better without an answer, if that makes sense. At least that's my opinion of that. So I really liked the book. It was really good. Did it make me cry? Of course it did. Does my heart ache? Of course it did. Will I ever read it again? Probably can't because it was really sad. It's like my favorite movie is Shawshank Redemption. And although it's my favorite movie, I cannot watch it ever again just because there's this really sad scene with like an old guy and it breaks my heart every time. So I cannot watch that movie, but I love that movie. And I think that's so good. Like I love, like my favorite things are good. You do it the one time, you don't read it or watch it again. 
you just let it stay like in your mind and in your heart and in your soul. So yeah, that's my review on Adam Silvera's They Both Die in the End. I love this book. If if you want a really cool, well-written, ex- a well-written, interest in themes, overall well done book. It's only like maybe a little over 200 pages. So it's a quick read as well. I definitely recommend it. I hands down, I recommend this book. I love it. Unlike the power of now. I did not like the power of now. (laughs) So yeah, with that, we're going to jump to everybody's favorite part of the show. That's right. It's the fun fact of the day. So today's fun fact is dun da da. To write a novel, it takes around 475 hours. The average novel is 90,000 words, which means writing 189 words an hour is pretty achievable. But writing a novel, it's important to note that it's not just putting some words on paper and there's tons and tons of more like to it than 189 words. Um, This site here, digital.imprint.co.uk, says that all the research that goes into a novel could easily add another 475 hours. So yeah, as somebody who has been writing a novel for quite some time and does not write it every single day. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Um, So with that, I'm going to bid you a great rest of your morning, a great rest of your evening, a great rest of your night, a great rest of your apocalypse, and a great rest of your reading endeavors. If you haven't already, read They Both Die in the End. It's worth it. Okay, 